Welcome to the last episode of the B-Movie Club. I'm your host, Kevin. This week we'll be discussing the 1987 comedy classic, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, starring Steve Martin and John Candy. For those of you joining us for the first time, we're like a book club. Only difference is we discuss wild and outrageous <laughs> movies, uh, forgotten classics, guilty pleasures, Typically not things that are talked about in polite conversation. No, um, just typically movies that maybe are a little off the beaten path, if you know what I'm saying. We don't discuss too many Academy Award winners. Uh, nothing uh, from Jane Austen, for example. If you're looking for the Jane Austen podcast, that's a different show altogether. Let me stop you right there. Um, what I do, how do I prepare for this show? I go online. I get all the information I can about a particular movie. I don't know how valid or true it all is. I do my best, okay, my crack team of researchers, yours truly. We do what we can do, you know what I'm saying? Um, most importantly, I watch the movie. Even if I've seen it a thousand times, I think it's important to watch it again just to kind of get those creative juices flowing if you get my drift. So. If you have any movie suggestions, feel free to contact me. You can reach me on our page on Facebook, Original B Movie Club. Um, also, you can reach me on Twitter, KD9575. Also, don't forget to subscribe on our page on YouTube, also KD9575. Good times. Don't forget, tell all your homies as well. Thank you very much. Planes, trains, and automobiles. In the story... Neil Page, played by Steve Martin, is an ad exec of some sort who works in New York, but I guess lives in Chicago. Not sure. Maybe a lot of people do it like that. Could be. Okay, that's quite a commute. It's two days until Thanksgiving. So he's had a long day at work. He rushes to try to get to the airport on time. He's got an early flight. And there's all sorts of cab issues. Gets to the airport, flight's delayed. Flight, flight's delayed because of weather in Chicago. It's snowy. What am I going to say? It's almost the winter time. It's almost the Christmas holiday season, so it's a little snowy. Um, later, he's able to get on the flight, but before he does, he meets a guy named Del Griffith, played by John Candy, who's kind of a, um, a loudmouth, kind of gregarious, um, a little uncouth, a little... Lack of tact, the things that he says, the way he carries himself. A little annoying. A little annoying. Of course, magically, they're seated right next to each other on the plane. Due to weather conditions, they're rerouted back to Wichita, Kansas. Which, in case you don't know your geography, is not on the way from New York to Chicago. Shocking, I know. Then that flight gets canceled. Now he's stuck in Wichita. He's got two days to get back in time for Thanksgiving. How are they going to do it? The flights are booked up. One thing leads to another. He's stuck with this guy, Del Griffith. They have to share a hotel room. Um, they wind up having to share a train, a plane, an automobile, hence its name. Um, I don't want to give everything away, but suffice it to say that Del Griffith has a lot of interesting personal habits that would be offensive to most normal people. He's constantly taking his shoes off and waving his uh, stinky socks all over the place. Uh, at night he's clearing his sinuses in, in, in nauseating detail. He smokes heavily, which Neil Page is very straight-laced. You know, it's, it's very similar to kind of an odd couple kind of situation. If you've seen Midnight Run, it's also kind of like that. What's interesting, the stark contrast between this movie and that movie, is that in those movies we sympathize with kind of the everyman, kind of slobby guy, about how neurotic the straight laced guy is. In this movie, it's the exact opposite. We're supposed to sympathize with the straight laced guy against the, the slovenly um, other guy. So there you go. Kind of an interesting, interesting take. Because hopefully most of us fall somewhere in the middle between the ultra, you know tight, neurotic guy, and the, the sloppy guy. Hopefully. I can't speak for you, but hopefully most of us be, you know, fall somewhere in the middle there. So there you go. I don't want to tell every interesting thing that happens, but another thing that's kind of interesting, 
about this movie uh, is that in order for it to work, you've got the John Candy, Doug Griffith character, who's basically a nice person, a good person, just has some uh, issues with hygiene and <laughs> voice modulation, you know what I'm saying? And stories, maybe best not shared, those kind of things. Whereas Steve Martin, who we're supposed to sympathize, is somebody who's not very tolerant. He's kind of a jerk. Because if, if he is super nice too, then he just kind of deals with it, you know, suffers in silence. But we need his character to kind of flip out a few times during the course of the movie to really add that tension, that spice. You know what I'm saying? Um, of course, over the course of the movie, uh, they kind of put aside their differences and become good buddies. So there you go. Um, this is one of my favorite movies. This is a family classic. Planes, trains, and automobiles. First of all, let me just tell you, uh, I think I, more, on more than one occasion I called it trains, planes, and automobiles. It's hard. It's that, it's that rhyming thing. What comes first? You just have to remember they get on the plane before they get on the train. So there you go. Um, what else can I tell you? John Hughes wrote, directed, and produced this movie. Up to this point, he, he was known primarily for like Sixteen Candles, Breakfast Club, uh, Pretty in Pink, those kind of things. Kind of those teenage angst kind of, kind of deals. And this one really kind of opened up critics' eyes that he had more to offer. He was able to uh, sit down and crack out this script in three days. Crazy. Three days. Knocked it out. Um, which I guess is pretty standard for him. That's how he works. He just knocks them out. Or he used to knock him out. He died in 2009, sadly. Um, so he took it from his own real life experiences as somebody who was flying from Chicago to New York and then back again. And because of weather, he was rerouted to Wichita. It took him five days to get home. Crazy, okay? Um, movie's a little dated at times, just by virtue of the fact that now everybody has cell phones. Back then, there's a lot of him like dialing on the phone or what are we going to do? Um, that sort of thing. Uh, another thing that I found interesting is that because there's a lot of issues with the travel, like he, uh, he has issues with the flights being delayed and then canceled, he has issues with the rental car, rental car he tries to get, it's not there, blah, blah, blah. They couldn't use actual names of airlines and rental car companies. They actually had to create their own. Doesn't sound like that's that complicated. They had to come up with their own logos, marathon rental car with a like color scheme, like uniforms, like a whole deal. So there you go. When John Hughes does something, he does it for real. Um, another interesting thing is that John Hughes actually filmed enough uh, footage, usable footage, for like a three-hour movie. And rumor has it, legend has it, that the footage still exists in the vaults in Paramount. Um, it's not in order. It would, have, it would take, he said it would take days, even years, to splice it all together to create a usable film, but it's there. I don't know what, what the thought process was, but he was able to do that. If you watch this movie, there's a lot of little crazy cameos. Uh, Michael McKean, if you might remember him, he was Lenny and Squiggy. He wasn't both of them, he was just Lenny. But if I just said he was Lenny, you wouldn't know of Mice and Men, you wouldn't get the idea. So from he was Lenny from of Lenny and Squiggy, from Laverne and Shirley. Yeah, he's on the screen for about two minutes. <laughs> My explanation of him is actually longer than his actual screen time. So there you go. There's other characters and actors that you might recognize throughout this thing. Um, also, a lot of actors that you might recognize from other movies, other John Hughes movies. So keep your eye out. There's actually a Kevin Bacon scene. So there you go. If you're scoring at home for uh, Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, he's in this movie as well. He, uh, <laughs> there's a scene at the beginning where he and Steve Martin are rushing to get the same taxi. He actually doesn't even say a word. It's just one of those, hey, that's Kevin Bacon. Um, his scene running through traffic is kind of reminiscent of Kevin Bacon's movie Quicksilver, where he plays a bicycle messenger in New York. So there you go. All sorts of good stuff going on here. There's one scene uh, where Steve Martin is basically abandoned by his rental car company, and all sorts of hijinks ensue, and he's basically yelling at the uh, the rental car agent behind the counter. In one 60 second period, he drops 18 F-bombs on her. So there you go. Interestingly enough, it was this uh, profanity-laced tirade 
that caused the movie to be a, an R-rated movie in the United States. There's really nothing else that's particularly objectionable for children or other people, <laughs> sensitive people, uh, old people. Nothing about this movie is that offensive except for that one 60 second scene. But what's interesting is countries like Canada and New Zealand, for example, with their thriving film industry, um, they basically, this movie is still rated PG in those nations because they're not that concerned with the F word as we are in the United States, I guess. So there you go. Um, like I said, I love this movie. It is hilarious. Um, it's not just hilarious, though. There's a lot of poignant scenes because the characters really are, in spite of their foibles, are um, very realistic. It's like Del Griffith has his backstory, which I'm not going to spoil for you here. Hopefully you've already seen the movie. Um, which kind of sets him up, even though he's kind of annoying, kind of is an understatement, he is still very sympathetic, and obviously we're supposed to relate to the Steve Martin character. He's got his own stuff he's dealing with. So there you go. Um, it <laughs> received a 94% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, which means you know it's good. Uh, Roger Ebert liked it particularly well. Leonard Maltin enjoyed it, however, he did not like the soundtrack. Okay. Um, I, for one, am a big fan of Paul Young, if you remember him from the 80s. The scene at the end of the movie where uh, John Candy and Steve Martin are kind of walking down the road together, they played that song by Paul Young, Every time you go away. I, I don't know what that has to do with this particular, I mean, it's a nice song, but it doesn't really, I mean, are they like together now? You know, over the course of the five days that they spent, they're now, you know, their relationship has gone to the next level? I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> it tugs on your heartstrings, even though if it's not appropriate to that scene. Anyway, what can I tell you? Anyway, that song was originally, on a little side note, originally recorded by Hall & Oates. So there you go. It adds a little extra gravitas to it, if you know what I mean. Um, next week, I'm going to be going back to the 90s, back to the action genre. One of my favorite Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. Sudden death. He's a fire marshal with surprising martial arts ability, taking on terrorists who've taken over <laughs> the hockey rink of the Pittsburgh Penguins during the Stanley Cup Finals. So it's got everything. It's got martial arts, it's got terrorism, it's got hockey, if that does it for you. It is streaming instantly on Netflix. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles is still streaming instantly, so check out both of those movies. Send in uh, your favorite scenes, favorite quotes, uh, anything you want to get off your chest, any movie suggestions, um, and I'll talk about it on the show. As you know, I end every episode with a totally out of context quote, and here it is. Those aren't pillows! Everyone on Earth should know what that reference is for, but if you don't, it's not too late. Go to Netflix and check it out. Um, thank you for joining us. Next week, sudden death. Be well.